I'll keep the dial where it is right now, honey. I'll do that. Thank you, Paula. Bye-bye. Bye. It was 1973. <laughs> And here was a woman putting her own body at the foreground of her art. I think you're calling the wrong show. I probably am. I Linda no, Benglis no, kissing another down, artist. Anyway, nice. Or posing nude with a giant sex toy. Centerfold, as she called it, is still too risque for a tea time news programme. But it made Benglis one of the most talked about artists in the world. Did, did you set out to provoke? Oh, I, I think I was being teased. And I wanted to tease, but I was also asking myself particular questions about sexuality within the context, okay? I happen to have a sister that is homosexual. Uh, what does it mean? Maybe I can better understand it by doing this. Is, is this and, and your other work, The Centerfold, is, is that shocking anymore in this day and age? Can it still shock? Well, it seems to be popular. Uh, I ask my question now, can it shock in the future? It's still an image. It's still an image to be reckoned with. So it's a good question. Now I think, will it run a lifetime? These are the days of Miley Cyrus twerking, wearing virtually nothing at all. Did you teach these kinds of people in a sort of indirect way how to be provocative? Uh, it's in our culture. It's in our mankind, womankind culture. To, to provoke. The feminist icon label, though, appears to sit uneasily with Benglis. She seems eager for us to know that even in the 70s, there was much more about her than that. My work is all about your body, my body, each individual body in relationship to what they see. What strikes you here in most of these pieces is the colour, as the much color. as the movement. Yes. How important is that and, and how different was that to what else was being done at the time by your contemporaries? Well, Karen, we were going through a minimal period. There, the people were, uh, Carl Andre put bricks on the floor. He put a brick, just stacking a line of bricks out on, say, a concrete floor. People went crazy in London when he did that. And I thought, that's interesting. What happens if you pour paint on the floor? What happens if you pour latex rubber? What happens if you pour polyurethane? You can look at the piece, you can walk around the piece, you see, you can walk around the piece. But then you do something like this, where you have a wall in the background. This piece looks back at you. This piece is more con confrontational. Do you think it challenges you in your context in, as a viewer? Yeah. Uh, would you go over and kick it? Is that the idea? Would you be challenged? Are, are you confrontational with it? No, I don't think I'd go that far. Well. Am I meant to? No. Now we're in a museum. You're <laughs> meant to behave yourself. Not but is this an artist but now found, behaving herself? There's five decades of work on display here, the last strikingly uh, different from the first. Do, do you think then over time you've moved away from the challenging? Have you become a bit more? Softer, I think yes. I've grown up a bit, you could say that. For some though, her career is defined by those earlier graphic images. What does the grown-up Benglis make of that? It's not me anymore, okay? If, if that's what you want to know. That's someone else. As far as I'm concerned, I did it. Uh, when I look at anything I've done in the past, that's another time. It could be someone else, but it marks my time, so I know it's me.